Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. I'm here with Doug Napier, and Doug is the Senior Legal Counsel for the Alliance Defense Fund. Now, that means you're a lawyer. That's correct. You, uh, you've got one particular area that you guys work on uh, that deals with universities and students at universities. Why does a Christian lawyer need to get involved with students at universities? Well, uh, unfortunately, we're seeing a, a growing hostility towards Christians especially, but students of faith at our public universities where, uh, you know, 30 years ago, it was the new orthodoxy that came in, the liberals came in, the left came in, and now they, they don't believe in the free marketplace of ideas. And they're telling Christians, you need to be silent about your faith, you need to be silent about what you believe in class assignments, and they're even telling some Christian students that your Christian faith is incompatible with, with this profession, such as social social work. Incompatible with social, Christianity is incompatible with social work. Yeah, try to wrap your mind about that one. Yeah, yeah. you say that and I kind of think, really? Is it really that bad? Are, are there some cases you can cite? I can give you three of them that we've been involved in. One is Julia Ward in Michigan and lovely, lovely African-American woman who was a school teacher uh, or a counselor in her school system and she was counseling students all the time. She says, you know, I ought to go back and get a degree in this. She went to Eastern Michigan University. She went through the whole program and she was asked to counsel uh, a, a man who was in a same-sex relationship and sh she was taught in her class if she had a, a values conflict what you do is you you refer them out mm -hmm. she made no scene she didn't uh, the, the client didn't know anything and the university came down on her they threw her out they denied her degree they said your your faith is incompatible with social work you've got to uh, put your faith aside if you're going to counsel people that's one of them. We have another student that uh, we're suing right now in, uh, in Georgia because uh, we're suing the university. The student was told, again, that her Christian faith, especially when it comes to family, family values, is incompatible. They wanted to go through this kind of thought reform process uh, if she wanted to stay in the program, and she refused. She stood firm on her faith, and they said, okay, then you're out. We had a, a student at, in Missouri, uh, this is several years ago, Emily Brooker, who uh, was told as part of a class assignment that she had to write a letter to the Missouri State Legislature advocating in favor of uh, same-sex adoptions. And it wasn't just, you know, write the letter and we'll talk about it. It's you have to write it, you need to put it in an envelope, stamp it, and mail it. So the class has now become a political action committee. Wow. And she says, no, I can't do that. Can you give me a different assignment? This was after uh, an earlier assignment where they were told to go out in public and engage in, in homosexual behavior to see what kind of public reaction they got and they were supposed to write about it. This was part of the class. This was in the social work program. She said no. The, the professor brought her up on the highest level of grievance charges. They put her in a room for two hours. They interrogated her. She wasn't allowed to have her parents there, wasn't allowed to have a lawyer there. It was just incredible. I mean, this is Missouri yeah, for this crying out loud. Sound this doesn't sound because like she dared stand up for her faith and so to the university's credit we got involved um, and the, the president put the professor on administratively they appointed a outside committee to investigate the department and they used words in the report like toxic and bullying and they said this whole department needs to go you need to start over huh. now to their credit they did that and they, and they allowed her to stay in the program they paid her tuition and paid for her graduate school so you had a but good outcome we had a good outcome and, and we're still litigating the other two but you know we shouldn't have to litigate these issues these are no-brainers yeah. why are our students being told at public universities you've got to leave your Christianity at home when you go onto campus a lot of Christians have an aversion to legal action must we resort to litigation? Uh, unfortunately, yes. And, and there are, but you know, these are real heroes. Emily Brooker and Julia Ward and, and uh, these students who stand up for their faith, it is hard to go through the litigation. And we try to do everything we can to make it as painless as possible. And many times they get settled out of court. And when they finally see that, you know, they really misstepped here. Uh, but they, they need to understand that the litigation that they're involved in they didn't cause it. They're just they're tr looking for a solution that is protected by the Constitution. Their rights to free speech and religious exercise, that's their constitutional right. And all they're trying to do is not only protect their rights, but the pr protecting the rights of other students by doing it. So they're really he heroes in our eyes, and we thank the students who have the really the backbone uh, to stand up and, and bring these cases. Are, are these cases sort of how your current program for university students came about? That 
come out of that or did it precede it? There, it's part of it. That's one area. The other area that we're seeing a lot of discrimination against Christians is in speech uh, zones if they want to have an event on campus. We have Christian clubs who want to be recognized alongside the 50 other clubs that, that are on campus. And they're saying, no, because you're Christian, we're not going to recognize you. you. You don't get to use the facilities. You're not going to get student fees. And we win those cases. I think we win like 90% of our university cases because they can't treat them differently, yeah. but they are, and they've been getting away with it for decades now. We have a map that shows all the universities that have unconstitutional speech codes or speech policies, really? and, and you, <laughs> pens all over the place. We can't get to them fast enough. We don't can, have the resources to get to them. Can the public look at your map? Do you have that online somewhere? Uh, if, some if they go to uh, speakupmovement.org, and there's a university section on there, there's some videos, there's information. I believe there's a map on there that shows where we've had suits and where we're planning to, to bring suits. But you know, the universities can see that map. They can say, wait a minute, hey, we're on their map. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should look at our speech codes. Would, n would that not be preferable? You would think so, yeah. and we do. We, we educate universities, say maybe, maybe you just missed this one somewhere along the way, right. even though you got a university law school sitting right on your campus <laughs> with constitutional <laughs> scholars. Maybe you missed this one, get it right. Some of them are so, they just are just so far, far gone in, in their agenda that they say, we don't care, we're going to do it anyway. What should a Christian parent do? Should they avoid these universities or should they invade these universities? Well, uh, that's a real debate. And, and the unfortunate reality is that uh, the parents don't always have a choice of where their kids can go to school or, or the students need to, a certain degree program and they may have to go to a public university. That's why we want to create a safe environment for Christian students at these public universities where their faith won't be literally bombarded daily and under attack and that they know it's okay, even in a public university setting, to not abandon their faith. So parents do need to be careful. They need to look at the schools. They need to look at their speech codes. And they need to also understand that, that if their students run into problems, that they've got a friend at the Alliance Defense Fund that we will represent them for free at no charge. Yes, lawyers. Representing uh, for free, can you uh -oh, believe that? Uh-oh, <laughs> here come the emails. Now, you, you mentioned speech codes. Does yeah. that mean as I go with my daughter this fall to visit college campuses, yeah. which, which we are already setting up, I can ask them for their speech code? They, sh they should have a student handbook, and what they'll have in there, they have these kind of vague uh, paragraphs about how you can't say anything that would make people feel bad. <laughs> Well, you know, this is the marketplace of idea. You have classroom debates on every, I mean, you talk yeah. about socialism and world governments, but you can't talk about Christianity because somebody might feel uncomfortable. Be offended. Yeah, and they'll, they'll, uh, <laughs> they'll write you up for it. Yeah, if you, could, if you go through college without ever being offended, you're not going to college, <laughs> well, I, I think. That's, that's the whole beauty of it, have a dialogue on yeah, these things. Sure. Allow, allow the Christianity to go up against any other worldview. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced that truth will always triumph. And we just need to make sure that Christianity is getting a fair shake and that these students know that, you know, they don't have to censor themselves. Uh, we, we want them to be respectful. But we had, a, we had a student in California, Jonathan Lopez, who was given a, an assignment in a speech class, Speech 101, okay? Give a speech on any topic that you want to, a persuasive speech on any topic you want to. He decided to explain why he was a Christian and what his faith meant to his life. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, you can see, you know, <laughs> yeah. rockets going off in the other... And, and at one point he uh, also said, and my faith informs me that, that marriage is between a man and a woman by God's design. Well, the professor just blew a gasket, slammed his books down, and he said, now if anybody in this class is offended, you can leave. Well, nobody left. So he said, well, class is dismissed. He wouldn't give Jonathan his grade sheet. And when he finally did, he wrote on there, ask God what your grade is. Wow. Yeah. We told him to tell the professor that God gave him an A, but, uh, but then the professor had it, had it in for him. He went to the dean's office to complain that how he was treated. And the dean saw him coming and says, I'll make sure you get thrown off this campus. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that, and this isn't a speech class. Just for free speech. Free speech. Wow. Free speech, you know, it worked well in the 60s and the 70s when they were protesting sure. everything, you know, imaginable. But now that they've taken over the universities, you know, they're controlled, they're, they're not going to allow uh, anything to challenge their new orthodoxy. Mm. But 
we think that it's very important that students stand up for what they believe and we're going to be right behind them and right beside them helping them do so. I think all everyone watching should send their children to uh, my alma mater or Roberts University. How's that sound? <laughs> I think that would be pretty safe. <laughs> Thank you for spending a few minutes with hey, us. If someone welcome. wants to follow up with you and the work you're doing and yeah. get more information, what's the best website for them to go to? The best website is the AllianceDefenseFund.org or TellADF.org if they want to type in all those letters. TellADF, T-E-L-L-A-D-F.org. Great. Thank you for your time. Thank you.